Let's open our Bibles to John's Gospel, the Gospel by John, chapter 5. Progressively, over the last month, looking at the Master's message. The Master is Jesus. His message is the Gospel. And I was entranced uh, many months ago, as we've been going verse by verse through the Gospel by Mark, when it said, Jesus preached the Gospel, I had never in my life ever systematically looked at what Jesus himself said. Now, I had read what the Apostles said, and I read... Uh, hundreds of commentaries and commentators, but never exactly in order what Jesus said. And that's what we're doing. And it's uh, something I've never done before. It's a thrilling study for me to look at each situation. Now, there are more than these, but these are the ones that I've found, where Jesus Christ himself, in Matthew and Mark, and now in Luke, and we're going to be momentarily back there, Jesus Christ, either one-on-one or to a crowd, or as he is speaking to his disciples or as he's correcting someone, describes the good news of how we can be with him forever in heaven. But let me show you what I mean by this, because we're looking at the foundation, the truths of our salvation, and that is that a Christian is one, and what we're looking at is just one distinct point this morning, a Christian is one who has received the word. In other words, and what we'll put in our notes in a minute is, a born-again Christian is a word-receiving person. What do I mean? Chapter 5, verse 24. Notice what Jesus says. He says, most assuredly, and by the way, after Luke comes John, and John is going to be just fascinating because Jesus explains the gospel absolutely in a whole different context than in any of the other gospels. So we're going there soon. But verse 24 is a little preview. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he, and this is Jesus speaking, he who hears my word, Jesus' word, that is the word receiving we're talking about, and believes in him who sent me. So Jesus is describing salvation. That person who receives the word has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment. Isn't that wonderful? I'll never be judged for any of the countless multitudes of sins that I've committed because Jesus Christ bore my judgment. And see, the difference between religion and revelation, revelation is God has revealed a complete sacrifice in Christ, and Jesus paid it all, and I don't add to it. I can't, never will, never could. Religion says Jesus perhaps paid part of it, you've got to pay the rest. And so that's why they do all kinds of works and sacrifices and pilgrimages to Mecca and all that stuff or knocking on doors. But the revelation of God's word is that whoever receives the word will never face judgment for their sins because Jesus already was judged. Now, keep going to Romans. If you keep turning to the right, chapter 10, here's one we all know. As you're going to Romans, you pass right over chapter 2 of Acts where it says those that received the word were baptized. In other words, those who were born again, they had received the word, were baptized. But chapter 10 of Romans says this, and we all know this. This is one that we share when we... We do the Romans road when we share the gospel with people. It says in verse 17 that in chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. So a born-again person is word receiving. Now keep turning to the right to James. Uh, We're going to cover the whole New Testament in two minutes, okay? James, keep going to the right. Uh, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. You know what I mean? 1st, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James. There it is. Almost to the end, chapter 1, and look what it says in verse 21. This is old King James. It says, Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflowing of wickedness, and receive with meekness, look at this, the implanted word which is able to save your souls. A born-again person is a word-receiving person. Remember Jesus earlier, we saw this, Mark 4, you know, and and Matthew 13, and and the whole picture of the Word of God being like seed being thrown. And some of the seed is thrown on the hard-packed roads that went between the fields of the Lord's land, Israel. And those seeds were sitting on what would be very much like concrete because it was packed down by centuries of, of traffic. And when the When the seed fell there, there was no hope of it penetrating, and the birds came and ate it away. He said those did not receive the word. Look what it says. The implanted word, which is able to save your soul. Now, it's interesting. The word implanted means I don't plant it. God plants it in my heart. It's a miracle. Salvation, anybody that's saved, isn't able to save themselves. It is a miracle of God. 
But the miracle of God is what we're examining. The gospel is that if we will respond in faith, and if faith is what reaches out to God, we reach out with nothing in ourselves to him and say, yes, I have the need of your forgiveness and of your sacrifice. When we do that, God supernaturally implants his word in us. We're word receiving. Here's another one, just to the right. Look at 1 Peter. It's the last one. We'll go back to Luke. But look at 1 Peter. That's the very next book after James. Chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Having been born again. So what we're saying is, uh, Luke, in the book of Luke and Acts, says people are saved as being word receiving. Romans, that's the Apostle Paul, says that people are born again as they receive the word. John records the words of Jesus, so John agrees and Jesus said it. Now we're with Peter. So, I mean, anybody that that was a major communicator said that a born-again person was receiving the word. Look how Peter puts it. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, understood seed, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. So how are you born again, Peter? By joining the church you supposedly founded? By participating in the sacraments that you supposedly instituted? No. Peter said you're born again by receiving this incorruptible word, this implanted word, receiving God's word. And when I receive God's word, I am born again. I have a new heart, a new spirit, a new direction of my life.